We're now going to talk about a term called the chain of trust as it applies to uh, SSL certificates. And to start our discussion, we'll revisit our look at uh, root uh, certificate authorities, root CA. Now, root CAs, uh, their certificates have to be kept behind numerous layers of security because the private keys of root uh, certificates are we have to make sure that they're absolutely inaccessible if the private keys are compromised then all the certificates based on uh, a root CA are compromised as well so we often use a stand-in for a root certificate or a proxy, something called an intermediate. CA. So these are entities or organizations that can issue certificates and whose certificate themselves is signed by a root CA. So let's suppose we look at our organization nscc.ca it can now make a certificate signing request to an intermediate CA so we'll just call this ICA now what happens when an ICA can actually issue actually a chain of certificates to NSCC, so we'll get uh, our SSL certificate. And that certificate will be signed by the ICA, but we'll also get another certificate. We'll get an ICA uh, certificate that is from that company itself that is also signed by a CA. So now we have a chain of certificates. So we go from the SSL certificate for NSCC.ca. That was issued by the intermediate CA. And that was signed by a CA that all browsers have in their list. So this is called a chain of certificates or a certificate chain or sometimes called the chain of trust because what we're proving is we're proving that this certificate is trusted and that a browser can trust that this is the organization nscc.ca an intermediate ca is verifying that and a certificate authority a root certificate authority is a validating of the ica so we have that chain that a browser needs to check We'll take a look at how this works. So if we were going to a certain site, for instance, if you go and you try to access HTTPS Google.com, what you'll see is you'll see that you'll get a little locked symbol in the browser window. And if you click on it, you can see some information about the certificate chain. So what you'll first see is that you'll see this right here. This is the SSL certificate. And that SSL certificate was issued by Google's intermediate CA. And if we looked in our keychain, we would find that if I look for Google here, we'll find we have no entry for Google in our keychain that our browser is going to use to verify. So our browser certainly cannot verify that. But because of the chain of trust, the root CA is actually GeoTrust, global, uh, GeoTrust Global CA. And if we look in our browser, we can see right here that that um, that is listed and we can 
validate that certificate. So let's look at a little more detail of this chain of trust and show how it works. So let's suppose we have our organism or our website nsc.ca and it wants an SSL certificate. So it's going to make a CSR certificate signing request and it can make that to an intermediate CA. And let's suppose we go to Google CA, which is an intermediate CA. Now, what was set up before was that GeoTrust has already validated uh, Google's intermediate CA. It trusts it and um, it has ensured uh, by some process that Google is trustworthy and it has authorized Google CA to issue certificates on its behalf. So what Google CA does is Google CA will issue an SSL certificate and it will of course have information about NSCC there. It will list Google CA as being the intermediate CA and of course all the certificate information it is going to make a hash of it and it is going to sign that certificate with the private key of Google. And all this together is part of the SSL cert that is sent to NSCC, so that will be sent back. But what else is sent back? <clears throat> because browsers can't validate, uh, the browsers don't have the Google Intermediate CA in their store, another certificate is also sent along. And this is their certificate from Google that will allow people to browsers to validate this certificate. We'll show how that works. So this is a certificate. It is Google's intermediate ICA certificate. It is going to be digitally signed by GeoTrust. So that information is on the certificate. Now, what comes in a certificate is, and all certificates contain the public key for the entity that the certificate is from. So this is gonna have the public key of Google, that intermediate CA. Up in here, we'll have the public key of NSCC because the certificate up top is going to be used for secure communications with NSCC. So we have all this information here. We're going to make a hash or a checksum of it. And this is all going to be digitally signed. So Google's intermediate certificate is all going to be digitally signed by the private key of GeoTrust. And these two certificates are sent to nscc.ca and they're installed in the NSCC web server. Now, when a browser hits the NSCC website, and when it requests an HTTPS or an encrypted type of communication path, what happens is both certificates get sent back to the browser. Now, the very first thing that has to happen is that if it looks at this certificate here, it'll be able to verify um, um, because uh, this browser has 
the certificates for all root CAs, and because this is a root CA, it'll be able to uh, unencrypt. It'll have the public key in the keychain, in the uh, certificate that it keeps. It has the public key of all root CAs, so it can unencrypt this hash, and it can see that this certificate or that the Google Intermediate Certificate is trusted by the root certificate. So it says, ah, okay, well, if the root certificate, I trust all root certificates, all root CAs that are in my list. And we looked at the keychain, it had a list of all root CAs. Because it can unencrypt this, it says, ah, I trust anything that this root CA trusts. Well, the root CA has signed this certificate from Google, the intermediate CA, so it automatically trusts that. And it gets the public key from Google. Now it looks at the SSL certificate that comes back from NSCC. It uses the public key down here to decrypt this hash. It checks that the certificate was not altered and it says, ah, okay, well, Google has signed uh, this SSL certificate. Since I trust the private CA GeoTrust, and since GeoTrust trusts Google, and Google trusts this certificate, therefore this browser accepts the certificate from NSCC, and it gets the public key from NSCC. It generates a symmetric key and it encrypts that key with the public key that it got from NSCC and it sends that key over to the web server. Now this is the NSCC web server which has a private key it keeps uh, it, it keeps secure so it unencrypts and gets the same symmetric key encryption key and both ends now use this symmetric encryption key to exchange information in the rest of their session. So whether it's they're doing a credit card sale or whatever, or the rest of the communication path will use this, um, this system. So this system here is how a chain of trust is established. Sometimes we call this a hierarchical hierarchical chain of certificates. And you can follow that chain in most browsers as we've seen uh, earlier. Now we'll look at a recent article of what can happen if the chain of trust has been compromised. And there was an article uh, recently about Google who banned, um, sorry, who banned uh, China's root certificate authority, uh, C CNNIC, after some type of security breach. Now, CNNIC was the root certificate authority, and it used a company called MCS Holdings as an intermediate certificate authority. And what happened is some of the certificates that MCS Holdings were generating, they weren't doing proper authorization on. So there was some problem with uh, that MCS should not be had issued um, certificates the way they were. So the problem wasn't with the root CA, it was with the intermediate CA. But the way that Google can control that is simply to remove CNNIC, it can remove the root certificate listing from uh, its browser access. For instance, if we look in the keychain here, we'll see that um, that uh, CNNIC is not listed. Now, that may simply be because we're in North America and that's a China uh, certificate, a root certificate. But if I try to access any website that CNNIC is the root certificate in the chain of trust, my browser will kick up something saying that's an untrusted site. So uh, 
if a CA or an intermediate CA has done something they shouldn't have, and if some of the browsers think it's uh, worthy enough, they may remove a root CA from the list of their trusted CAs, and so that browser will pop up a message to users saying it's an untrusted site. Now, not all browsers will. Every browser has their own system of how they store root certificates. And uh, so Google and Mozilla, in this case, uh, had banned it, but Microsoft had not uh, banned it. I think Microsoft had a way of looking to and just banning MCS holding certificates. And I'm not quite sure how that uh, method worked. But you can find that uh, this uh, trust uh, can be compromised and that browsers and companies do have some alternatives to um, so, sort of unrecognize uh, a root CA so that uh, they no longer are uh, uh, have the right to issue trusted certificates uh, as far as that browser is concerned. So that was an overview of chain of trust and how um, how certificates um, and intermediate certificate authorities work, how that chain of trust is established, and how browsers uh, validate whether a certificate, an SSL certificate from an entity, um, should be trusted.